go to allow the Spirit of God to do what He wants to do. This, this is not our service. It's service. It's a service of God. Sometimes we come to His presence wanting to do things our way, you know, intending just to have things work as we are planned. But it's more important to allow God to work the way He wants to work. Amen? And I'm learning to trust God to be on the steering rather than I be on the steering and put the car on the ditch. Amen? I may not know the way, but I know he who knows the way, and he is the way. Tell your neighbor, pastor, he's saying he may not know the way, but he knows he who knows the way, and he is the way. It's not a tongue twister. We are only saying... We may not know the way, but we know him who knows the way. And his name is the way, because he is the way, the truth, and, and life. So when we know him who is the way, why are we worried? We know that he knows the destination. He'll take us there. We are breaking mental stronghold. We are still on breaking mental stronghold. And uh, we thank God for where we'll be able to push it today. Our key scripture is 2 Corinthians 10, 4 to 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. I read it in New King James Version. It says, For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Praise Jesus. For pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Praise the name of the living God. The weapons of our welfare are not physical, they are not weapon of flesh and blood, they are mighty before God, they are mighty to overthrow, to destroy stronghold, they are mighty to refute argument and theories, they are mighty to bring down reasoning, and every proud or lofty thing that set itself up against the knowledge of our God. The Bible says, and this enables us to lead every thought and every purpose captive to the obedience of Christ Jesus. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Now, we have already covered quite a chunk of the introduction of breaking mental stronghold. We said human mind is a battlefield. We said that. We said battles are won or lost in the mind. We say thought shapes your life. We say thoughts have incredible powers. And last time I was standing here sharing this message, we looked into transformational information that you need as a child of God. And I gave you seven transformational information that you need as a child of God. And just to remind you, we said the life you live is often a reflection of the thoughts you think daily. The life you live is often a reflection of of the thoughts that you think daily. So when you look at your life, you see your thoughts at work. We also say number two, your life usually follows the dominant thought that follows or that flows in your mind. Your life will usually follow the dominant thought that flows in your mind. Whatever thoughts that keeps ringing in your mind, your life will follow that kind of a thought. And then we say number three, the quality of your life will never be better than the quality of your thoughts. The quality of your life will never be better than the quality of your thoughts. And then number four, we said every major breakthrough in life is traceable to a breakthrough in human mind. If you ever encounter any uncommon breakthrough, even spiritual breakthrough, they are traced to a breakthrough in the mind of a man. Number six, we said, number five, sorry, we said, your mind is a mentor factory and your thoughts are the raw materials. They are the ingredients that you put in for you to be able to get the final product. And number six, we said, success in life is not in what you have, but in who you are in the inside. Success in life is not in what you have, 
but in who you are in the inside. And we agreed, you can lose anything that you have today, but you still regain it if this thing came from you. But if you got it from somewhere, we said, Dikekomba inaeza chomeka, na vitu na mali kachomeka, lakini akili ya biashara, hai chomeki wakati kikomba inachomeka. Amen. So, naema ya mungu ilio ndani yako. Hata kama zile vitu konazo zote zinaeza zikaisha. Ile naema ya mungu ilio ndani yako. Hiyo naema utachipuka tena. That is the word of God. Mti hata unapo katwa. Kwa harufu ya maji. Unafanya nini? Unachipuka tena. Na wewe as a man or woman of God. If you have the right mindset. Hata kama unaeza ukakatwa. Unaeza rushwa inji ya huduma. Unaweza tolewa kumahali ambapo umefanyia mungu huduma. Ukweli wa mambo ni kwamba it's just a matter of time. Amen. Kama utajiri wako wote unaweza chukuliwa. And you have the mindset of Christ. It's just a matter of time. You will rise again. Amen. You will rise again. And we stopped at number seven when we said, A man is never transformed until his mindset gets transformed. And that's where I want to pick from today. A man is never transformed until his mindset gets transformed. In other words, you are saying transformation starts the moment you engage your mind to change your world. Transformation starts the moment you engage your mind to change your world. Look at your neighbor and tell him you are not just made for your village. Amen. You are not designed for just your estate. You are not made just for your age mates. You are designed as a transformer of the world. And as we began our intercession this morning, I said, I am seeing giant rising. I'm seeing in the spirit, giants rising. Men and women of Vera rising from the dust. I see them rising. And I see them before me this morning. The grace of God is available to turn you into a different man. But transformation to get to that point where God is taking you, it has to start the moment you set your mind that you want to see transformation taking place. So transformation starts the moment you engage your mind to change your world. For those of us that are working here, from today, purpose not to work for a salary. Work to change your world. The problem we have is because we work for salaries. That's why you do only what you are assigned to do. But the moment you understand that your assignment is greater than earning a salary, you start engaging your mind to transform the world. Ministers that are here, don't just see PMI altar. Don't just see the 200, the 300 people seated before us this morning. See the world that is waiting for you. If you are called to minister to the young people, see the hungry young people who are hungering for the presence of God. Start seeing them all over the world. And start having your mind engaged. And ask God, transform me to capture your mind on how I can reach out to these young people. Amen. If God is calling you for families, don't you just see the few families we have here at PMI Thicker Road. But of course they are not prying. The least we can never be here, the least we'll ever be in our service very soon will be a thousand. Praise the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you and you see it. The least we'll ever hold for a service will be a thousand. For the glory of God. And we are getting there. We are engaging our minds and now we are telling God we want to change our mindset so that we can build the capacity for thousands. Do you know why God gave us this message for mindset? Because how is it to peleka to the thousand capacity with the same mentality that we have? The system has to be overhauled. The system has to change. Because if today God gives you the thousands we are trusting God for, ata sahi wa kikuja, chakwanza kwa kuketi itakuwa nishida. Sindio? That's just physical. Tutanza kuangana na viti na kutafta viti. So what God is doing now, he's building our capacity and he's transforming our mindsets so that now we can start thinking thousands. Amen. We start planning for 
thousands. When we are planning a service like this, we are working knowing a thousand plus are coming to the service. So the programmer knows that by this time, a thousand people will be leaving the doors of the church. And another thousand plus will be coming in. So we have to do plans in a way that we create the conducive environment for that. And that begins with a change of the mindset. Hallelujah. Transformation begins the moment you engage your mind to change your world. How many world changers are gathered here today? You believe in the word of God. You know for sure. You look like you do not believe it. I'm asking those who believe that they are world changers. Shoot up your hand. You are a world changer. Amen? Not a village changer. I'm calling you a world changer. You are designed to change the world. Start seeing yourself as so. Do you know what the Bible says in Revelation 11, 15? I think it is facts when he was reading us in the morning who quoted that scripture. Let's look at it. Revelation eleven fifteen. This is where God is taking us. And that's why he wants us to change our mindset. Revelation eleven fifteen. 15. PMI, I think I would follow me closely because this is not a sermon. This is the word of God. One, two, three, go. Let's read God's word. What does the Bible say? Then the seventh angel sounded. The number seven there is significant. The seventh angel sounded. The number of perfection. The number of completeness. The seventh angel did what? Sounded. Uh huh. And there were round voices in heaven. When the seventh angel sounded, there were round voices in heaven. So, kama unasikia, unasumbuliwa na kelele, ata binguni kuna kuanga na nini? <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Kuja kuna watu anasumbukanga na sisi tukipiga. Kwa nini watu lazima waombe na kelele? Kwa nini lazima wapiga pige makofi wa? Ata bingu kuna kelele. Na fraia neno la mungabia jirani bingu kuna kelele mwana. So, ukisikia tukimba hibo, hizi ni kelele za nini? Bingu kuna kelele. Now, there were loud voices where? In heaven. Saying, this is what I want you to do. Lead that with all the power and the strength that you have. One, two, three, go. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. Lead it again. One, two, three, go. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Now let your mind change. Because where God wants to take you, or where God is taking you, it is a place where kingdom realities becomes a reality in the kingdoms of the earth. Amen. What we are saying in another language is, you will be manifesting the glories of heaven here on earth. The way heaven operates. Don't we pray a prayer and we say, let it be done here on earth as it is done where? Now the place that God is taking you church is a place where whatever is happening up there will be happening here. The Bible says whatever we bound here shall be bound there. Operating with authority and grace. In heaven, hakuna mbeberezano. Amen. Hakuna. And now the Bible says that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord. How will the kingdoms of the marketplace become the kingdoms of our Lord? There have to be anointed men and women of God in the marketplace who exercises the realities of their kingdom. Daniel, Shadrach, and Abednego were carried into a land far off to the land of Babylon. From Judah to Babylon. And the king of the land tried all that he could do to transform these men to fit into his kingdom. He took them to the language school. He took them to the scientific school of his age. He tried even to change their name. So that he can transform them to fit into his kingdom. But these men were reflecting. 
these men were radiating the realities of their kingdom. They could not fit in Babylon. And listen to me, church, we have fit wrong enough in Babylon system. Now the Lord is calling for a church that will rise with the anointing of the Lord. And that's why we are saying we are rising in the name of the Lord to challenge the systems of Babylon. We need Daniel who say, yes, thank you, sir, for educating me. But I have something greater on the inside of me. I am of the tribe of Judah. There is something that cannot change because of the favors that you have extended to me. Go ahead and extend your favors. But let me tell you something. What I'm made of is not of this world. What I'm made of is not of this system. I operate under different anointing and grace. The anointing that's upon my life is a home anointing. The kingdoms of the earth, the kingdoms of the world have become the kingdoms of our Lord. God is in the business right now of raising giants of faith. The king of the land directs a statue in his name and he says, everybody must bow to this thing. Including himself. I imagine you have to say, I have to say, I have so there was an, a word that everybody in the kingdom and all the kingdoms, all the, all the citadels and all, and all the nations that were connected to Babylon that they were to bow before this image. But there were three men who knew who they were and they wanted to reflect the realities of the kingdom that they were serving before the king of Babylon. He said, we respect you, king. We respect your word. But in matters of worship, in matters of faith, we operate with another reality. We are not bowing. The king said, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what I was. They say, we know king. And the God that we serve, we know him. We know him. If it's about the furnace and about the fire, he is the Lord of fire. In fact, himself is the fire. <laughs> so don't think when you talk about the fire, you are scaring us by fire. We know him who is fire and who is the source of fire. By the way, Elijah said, let us know the God who is the true God. The God who answers by fire shall be the true God. And do you know our God is fire? And he answers by fire? We are preparing for Ibada Africa fresh fire and we are trusting God to experience his fire because we know him who answers by fire praise the name of the Lord so Shadrach with his brothers with the anointing and the grace of God they said we are manifesting the realities of our kingdom here before the kingdom of Babylon it didn't take time before the king said and this is the God who shall be worshipped, shall be worshipped in this land. How did they come to that point? There were men who understood their position. And they decided to cause the kingdoms of the world to become the kingdoms of their Jehovah. Amen. Our young people can serve our God. This nation can serve our God. The church can preach the true gospel. Men of God can move from chasing things and they start chasing for the Holy Ghost. When the kingdom of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord. Do you know what church? PMI. When the kingdom of God becomes a reality here, you will not do big crusades for people to come they will come because they want to experience the reality of the kingdom of your God. They need a demonstration. And that's why we must trust God. Preachers that are here, worshippers that are here, we must trust God not for just empty messages, but for messages that 
are powered and that releases the demonstration of the spirit power. I don't want just to preach someone to excite you. You are better places you could have been this morning. Why should you come here and I waste your one hour, your two hours? I believe God to share with you a word that will change your life. What you are saying is transformation begins the moment you engage your mind to transform your world. The only thing I'm just trying to say today, let your mind be transformed. Start seeing yourself as a world changer. The systems of education, Ticharirian, they can change. The moment we accept God to use us so that we can turn the education system of Kenya to start operating with our kingdom principles. The politicians can run to the church to seek the counsel of the church. Niwaulize. Wakati kulikuwa na babu, wala muna kubuka babu. Si muna kubuka babu. Maybe wengine wajui ni babu mungani, wanafikia ni babu yako. Si yungi kusu babu yako. Babu wa Roriondo. You remember the days of Babu Aroriondo? Why were men traveling? Mbaka ukatole wa stage mpia. Nairobi. Roriondo Express. Why do you think they created Roriondo Express? There was a man who was manifesting the values and the reality of his kingdom. If you manifest the reality of the kingdom of your Jehovah, They will start looking for you. You are busy looking for money. Today change your mind and start looking for God. Business people, look for God. God of business. Amen. The moment you start doing business with the mind of God, people will be coming. They will be coming. They will be attracted by something they don't know. People will be lining up asking you, what's the secret of doing business? You become a mentor and they'll pay you for that. Utafanya seminars a kuafundisha how to do business. Kingdom business mindset. Na wanakuja grad legency, wanakuja kempinski, wanalipa kusikia mutu ambaye alifanyua transformation of the mind. And they pay for it. Imagine watu wanakuja wanalipa kukusikiza. Now na simama tu unaambia tu vitu za kawaida tu ah, investment first of all sit down and put down your idea hiyo kusema put down your idea you are paid for it it is not something new they will be coming looking for but there is an anointing that is operating in your life because your mind has been transformed that will cause men to be willing to pay you sasa unaona vile kufanya biashara ni rais that's why we sweat. We Transformation begins the moment you set your mind to change your world. Are there world changers once again in this meeting? Let transformation begin. Now Paul says, for the weapon of our warfare are not canon. What are they? The Almighty in who? For what purpose? For pulling down what? What has made us remain where we are? Our mental strongholds. Strongholds that are formed in our minds. Some of these strongholds have existed from the time you are a child. Kuna watu hapa wanaamini hawezi fanya biashara. Biashara ni awalia na kikuyu na kisi. Jesus said, occupy till I come. You can do business Christ way. Occupy. Go ye and make disciples of all nations. You can go out and make disciples for Christ. Because you have been given a mandate to go and do that. The 
problem as to why you are not going. Strongholds. Look at your neighbor and tell him it is time to break those strongholds. You have not become the person you should have become long time ago. The only problem is what? Strongholds. And here we are talking specifically about mental strongholds. Things that are holding your mind. Things that are telling your mind you cannot, you will never, it is not possible, you are bad in this, you don't have this. And these things have affected your belief system. Until now you are a captive of your very own thoughts. Now the weapons of a warfare, what are they? They are mighty for doing what again church? For putting down what? Strongholds. Now, Because my time is up, let me break that down and tell you what our weapon of warfare are able to do. Five things that our weapon of warfare are able to do. Our weapons of warfare are designed, they are formed, and they are made for the following five reasons. Why do you have this weapon of warfare? We say our weapon of warfare are designed, they are formed, and are made for the following purposes. Number one, a weapon of warfare are designed for knocking down, pulling down, and overthrowing the strongholds. Our weapons of warfare are made for knocking down, pulling down, overthrowing the strongholds. I want you to underline those words. They are militant words. They are violent words words. They are not soft words. Strongholds will not be broken by soft voices. By soft singing. Strongholds have to be knocked down. They have to be pulled down. They have to be overthrown because they have exalted themselves. They have to be knocked down. Amen? So the weapons of our warfare, the weapons that have been given of God, they have been designed, they have been formed, they have been made to knock down, to pull down, to overthrow what? Stronghold. What kind of strongholds are we talking about here? The strongholds of human reasoning. Mawazo ya kibinadamu. Tumezoelea mawazo ya kibinadamu. Tunafanya biashara kulingana na mawazo ya vile tulifundishwa when we were doing economics in school. Mwenye aliandika hiko kitabu cha economics. Ni kulingana na ile ufunuo alikuwa nayo hiyo so siku. Sisi tuna neema ingine tuna ufunuo kutoka juu mbinguni. You can write your own economic book. How to do business in the 21st century. Doing business God's way. Doing business powered by the Holy Ghost. You can write your own book. And people can start running how to do business in a different way. Putting down, knocking down, overthrowing the stronghold of human reasoning. They have taught you how marriage works. For you to marry, uh, I don't know how you have to approach, how you have to do, to do what, to do what, to do what. The systems of the world. Who told you that it must work that way? Friends. Who say that it must work that way? Strongholds of human minds. As I asked here, I asked young people another time, who say that we must do a pre-wedding for us to have a wedding? By the way, if we want a wedding, so we go for a wedding, why a pre-wedding? Now by the way, pre-wedding, I can't pre-wedding. To eat a fundraiser, to watch a good pre-wedding. Mano ya kuanga harambe. Kama ingekuwa pre-wedding, tungejaribu kulihasi kumachi. Na sijaona pre-wedding watu wanalihasi. Si pre-ni before. So ikitua pre-wedding is the wedding before the wedding. Nini, siju kama muna onanga kama mimi. Iyo siyo pre-wedding. Ni mchango, tuite mchango. Mchango wakuchangia pirao. 
it is human reasoning. Somebody came up with the idea that for you to do a wedding, you must have a pre-wedding. And we are held by the stronghold. Tunafikiri yanga tu, lazima kukuwe na pre-wedding. Hata kwa mpango yako, hata mkikaa chini na sweet hatu wako. Kitu ya kwanza, pre-wedding, tuweka date gani? A book date ya pre-wedding. Your mind is held that there has to be pre-wedding. Last Sunday officiated the wedding in Mombasa. It was a three weeks planned wedding. Three weeks. And it was done. Na kila kitu ilikuwa. Ni harusi alikuwa na neti, tulikula keki, tulikula pilau. By the way, pilau ya Mombasa ni tamu. Tell your neighbor, pull down the strongholds. Number two. Number two, the weapons that we have of warfare are designed, they are formed for destroying, casting down, and refuting, destroying, casting down, and refuting false arguments. Number two, designed and formed for destroying, casting down, refuting false arguments, theories, and reasoning. Destroying, casting down, refuting false arguments, theories, and reasoning. All these things, the weapons that you have, the weapon of warfare, they are mighty in God to destroy, to cast down, to refute arguments. Do you listen to those arguments in your mind? Inawezekana, haiwezekani. Nikama ni sawa, nikama si sawa. Those false arguments in your mind, the argument that runs in your mind that has formed a stronghold, you have been given weapons. Amen. Wengine hapa walienda shule wakafanya ka certificate. Ka certificate. Hata kana itongwa certificate of education. Na wakasema tu nimesoma. Okay, waza. Na ulimaliza shule? Nilimaliza. Na alifanya sati. Unajua kila mtu akona certificate. Mana ni sheria ya Kenya kila mtu akuwe na bath. So kila mtu akuwe na certificate. Kama ukuwe na certificate, wuko kama kila mtu. Kila mtu hapa akuwe na nini? Ama ni nani ana certificate ukweli. Zote tuko na nini? Lakini tukianza kusonga hapa metu uliza, ni wangatu akuwe na diploma. Hakunanga diploma of bath. Praise the name of Jesus. Hakuna bachelors of birth and raising. You hear bachelors of art, bachelors of science, and such. Ask your neighbor, wewe ni nini na kuzuhiri anga? Argument gani? Ni argument gani? Zira kwa mea. Mwingine argument kama, mimi ni mzee sana, siwezi soma, mimi ni mzee sana. Akiri gani rizeka? By the way, yakiri ambayo ni ya mzee ndio yakiri nzuri maana imeona vitu nyingi inaweza reason better. Wangapi wako na akiri mzee hapa? It's just argument in our minds. Atuwezi soma. Ngi anasema mtumia tanie, dumia. Yaani mama anasema kimama kama mimi kisome. It's false arguments in the mind. Ladies you can study. Amen. While I took on a certificate, we can do diploma. When you took on a diploma, you can do degrees. And those with degrees, we can master. We can doctor. We can. Amen. Because we are talking of giants. God is telling me once again and again, he's raising giants in our midst. We need also academia giants. Praise the name of Jesus. Academia giants. Not just giants in shaka makatobo seta. We need also giants who can reason. Amen. Hapa kuna majant wa faith wanatatamesha mapepo lakini kifika reasoning. Hai. Arguments. Praise the name of the Lord. We are refuting force. And hizo mawazo strongholds akukwambia hawezi soma. Bring them down. Amen. Ati mimi siwezi olewa nimepita umri wa kuolewa. Na wapi miandikwa wapi? Ati watu wanaoleangwa na hii umri. Kama iliandikwa iliandikwa na wanadamu unaweza andika ingine. Tell your neighbor you need to destroy those arguments. Number three. Number three. The weapons that we have 
are designed, they're equipped for destroying every proud obstacle. Every proud obstacle, lofty or high thing that keeps you from knowing God. Destroying every proud obstacle. Their mind of pride that has formed in your thoughts. Masauti zingine zina kiburi na kama hehe. Zina kuchekele yanga. Hata zingine zina kuchekele kwa usingizi kwa ndoto. Hehe, abu jiangalia. Usiku zina kuchekele. And you wake up in the night. You are so scared. Kwa sababu kuna maroho za kiburi zina kuchekele yanga. Maroho za kwenu zina kukujianga. Kwanza kama wewe ni muruya kama mimi. Tu waruya wanapenda ndoto. Haleluya. Waruya tunapenda ndoto. Dina praise the Lord. Tunatumia ngo katika roho ya unabii. Na kutafsiri kuona na kutafsiri. Kuna ndoto zingine zinakuja usiku za kiburi, maroho za kiburi zinakustua na kiburi ya waliokufa destroy those proud obstacles amen those lofty and high thinking those things that pulls you down that looks down on you we are destroying them those things that keeps you from knowing god those things that keeps you from attaining the mind of christ we are pulling them down amen how i wish we had time to continue but number four. Number four, the weapons of warfare almighty in God for taking captive. There is somebody at the door, Joyce. For taking captive rebellious thoughts. Taking captive rebellious thoughts. Kuna tuwazo tungine tunakuanga rebellious kwa akili. Unajaribu kukafinya kana unuka. Kana kanga kama barun kwa maji. Unafinya kana chuku. Kana tokerezea tena. Now the Bible says the weapons of warfare they are mighty in God for taking captive rebellious thoughts. Kama kuna tuwazo tumekuwa tukisneak tunachomoka hivyo kama hiyo baruni kwa maji. Kaenda maji kiwa na sabuni. Na jaribu kafinyilia kanainuka tena. Those thoughts the weapons of warfare are mighty. We are breaking from those mental strongholds. We are taking captive every rebellious thought. Kila wazo ambayo inakusumbuanga Suicidal thoughts. And by the way, when I was praying in the morning, the suicidal thoughts passed around my mind. And I heard the Spirit of God saying, you have to destroy the suicidal thought. And if you're here in this meeting, and that was you, it is destroyed permanently in the name of Jesus. No suicidal thought. Ati unakanga hivi unaona, mimi sasa ni wanini, mimi hata sina maana dunia hii, hata heli nife. Wewe. Utakufa utuache tukikula ugali na tukiendelea na maisha. Na utaenda jehanamu. Take that captive thought. Take that thought captive. Amen. Take it captive. Decree the word of God and say I'm not dying. I shall live. Amen. I am living to see my great great grandchildren. Nitawaona toguka na tushosho. I'm living. This week we were privileged to host Amze here of 105 years. He came visiting us here. 105 years. And he received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior here. And when I saw that, I said, Tutaishi na tutaona mungu. Na kama Amze wa 105, 105, anawakokea hapa. Ah, tutaishi kuona 105. Ata atu 105, tutaona watu wakiokoka. Praise the name of Jesus. Break the mental stronghold. At means taki kuishi sana, niishi sana, ni kue muziko kwa watu. Ishi mpendwa. Amen. Ishi mpaka uchoke. Wamia mungu sasa, tuelewane unanikujia lini. Wana nimechoka na? Akini kuna tudoa tunakumumkianga usiku, aya utakufa. Unaamuka ukipuwa, aaa! Watu anashino ni nini? Na nitusauti tunakuambia utakufa. Take captive rebellious thoughts. Ati we unaotanga na walio kufa, wana kukujia. Ati hata juzi pasta unajua, niliona shosho ya shosho yangu, haki nifanyia hivi. Iyo pasta inamaanisha nini?
those thoughts of dead, we say, rinse them in the name of Jesus. Take them captive. See yourself living. Amen. See yourself. No, I'm going to do some up. I'm going to go to the driving school. Man, I'm going to go to the driving school. I'm going to go to the driving school. Sasa na wakopa kwa na driving school. Because ya kiroo, cha wenyewe. And the driving school. Amen. Hauta kufa kwa barabara. Maandiko inasema, wanao penda mungu hawafi. Uwa ni kulala, wanalala. Siku yako ikifika ya kulala, utalala. Na hata ikifika ukua kwa barabara, utalala, ukua kwa barabara. Na utaenda. Take captive rebellious. And finally church, our weapon of warfare are powerful they are mighty in God for leading every thought into obedience of Christ. Leading every thought into obedience of Christ. Leading every thought into obedience of Christ. We are breaking mental strongholds and we are believing God that we shall lead every thought to be obedient to Christ Jesus. Kira wazo limti Yesu. Amen. Si ushike tu kichwa chako simama na miguu yako uombe kichwa chako na waseme kila wazo ndani yangu kinyume na mapenzi ya Kristo kinyume na mpango wa Kristo na kushika mateka na kushika nyala leo na ninakuamulisha ukatii ukamti Yesu Kristo let's stand on our feet and make that prayer in the presence of God let's just stand make that prayer make that prayer make that prayer this is our altar call we are done with the message this is our altar call that's how we are closing it you are making a prayer over your head you are talking to your mind you are talking to your thought we are saying transformation start the moment you engage your mind to change your world transformation can only begin the moment you just decide i want to see my life change i want to change my economic status hakuna transformation ya economics usipoamua mawazo yangu na engage kuanzia leo sita an mshara yenye nina an na engagement yangu to get to another salary scale na move to another salary scale it begins by engaging your mind hey. transformation start the moment we engage our mind to change our world not to change a village not just to change your wallet but to change an entire economic system if you're in the business of selling clothes change the world of selling clothes start becoming a manufacturer not just a seller of motumba you can start seeing yourself as an importer you can change and start seeing yourself as a solution to the clothes industry not just picking a few clothes from gekomba you can start seeing yourself bringing in ship bringing in containers you can start seeing yourself as a non to the world of the business of clothing if you're in the business of selling you can start seeing yourself as an answer to that business if you believe God to sell cars see yourself as an answer to the issue of cars become a solution see yourself supplying all manners of cars not just second hand cars see yourself importing them see yourself bringing containers of cars and becoming a solution in the field of car business hey am I speaking to giants. If you are a menace of the gospel, start engaging your mind and start seeing yourself hoping from one plane to another, moving from one nation to another. Worshippers that are here, start seeing yourself being on a stadium, standing on a platform, on a stadium, and souls are turning to Christ. Don't just see yourself making money. See men turning to Christ. See men being set free. See men being delivered. Stand on the podium and see men and women are sea of humanity being set free being delivered turning to Christ transformation begins church when we set our mind to change our world see your family changing see your tribe changing see your clan changing see your village changing we are seeing the city of Nairobi changing and be a mile thicker old we are rising as a voice in the city of Nairobi we are going to do church in a different way we are going to do ministry in a different way. We are changing our mindset. We are making the reality of our kingdom become the reality of church business and church shall be done in a different way. We are being powered by the Holy Ghost to take captive every rebellious thought. Every thought that I've said in Lakisama a church has to operate at a ceiling of 500. No! We break this stronghold. In Lakisama we shall have 
a sanctuary of tens of thousands in like summer there shall rise a cathedral in this estate for the glory of God I see a cathedral rising for the glory of Jehovah yes there is power available for all this to happen because what you have been given a weapon of warfare that are mighty in God they are powerful they are mighty to pull down strongholds they are no simple weapons they are mighty in God reverse every evil thought reverse every negative thought every thought of sin that have taken you captive every time you think you think of yourself sinning you see yourself sinning you see yourself bound by that sin that thought break its power you have been given power and authority to take captive every rebellious thought there is power in the name of Jesus There is power in the name of Jesus. We sing it. There is power. There is power in, in the, the name, name of Jesus. To do what? To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every. Sing that song with revelation. There is power to break that chain. To break every. You know those chains that have been holding you. There is power to break them. You know them. There is power now. There is power. In the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power to break that chain. There is power. Break every chain. Break every chain. There is power, there is power to break every chain. There is power. There is power. There is power, church. There is power. Break those chains. To break every chain. Break those chains. To break every chain. We are breaking the chain. Break every chain. Man to stronghold. Every chain. Man to stronghold. Man to stronghold. Every stronghold in your mind. There is power. In the name of Woo! Jesus, that is power. That is power. That is power. That is power. Every chain to break 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 every chain we are breaking the chains of man to strongholds, man to strongholds, man to strongholds. We are breaking all these chains. The impossible mindset, the impossibility chains. We are breaking them. Break them, break them, break them, break them, break them. There is power. Power is available. Power is available. You can break those chains. In the name of 
captive every thought. Take captive every thought. Take every captive. Every thought of sin. Every thought of sin. That have been resurrected every now and then. Break it break every Take it captive. Take it captive. In the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power. In the name of Jesus. Receive power to break us. power to break every chain Hallelujah. we are breaking every mental chain every mental stronghold this morning we break it every theories every reasoning of men we are refuting every argument those arguments that have been running in your mind those voices that have been hearing in between your ears we are taking them captive and this morning we make one choice to believe the report of God. We are making one choice to believe the report of God. Those voices of your old grandma, those voices of your uncle, of your biology teacher, those voices of your mother, stepmother, that really hit on you so hard. We are breaking them today. And we are operating with the mind of Christ. That says, I'm fearful and wonderful made. I believe the report of the Lord. I'm made and I'm designed for great exploits. I believe the mind of God. That I'll prosper, I'll succeed wherever I go. As I meditate on the word of God, wherever I turn, I'll succeed. Those minds that I've been telling you, you cannot make it. Tell them I will make it because I know he who gives me strength. Those voices that are telling you, you die like your auntie died of that cancer, that like your auntie died of, I don't know what. Break those voices. And believe God that you shall not die. But you shall live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You shall live as a testimony. Those who are waiting to still see you cast down and falling down and trend, being trodden down, tell them, don't grow over me. Because I'm down, I'm rising up. I am rising up, I'm rising up, I'm rising up. I'm taking Isaiah 60 verse number 1. I'm arising and I'm shining for the glory of God. is risen upon me. The anointing of God is upon me to rise. Oh, we are breaking every chain. We are breaking every chain now. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Lift up your voice and say this was say. There is an army rising. Giants are rising. Giants in the marketplace. Giants in the ministry. They are rising. There is an army that is rising. There is an army that is rising. Giants of faith. Giants in the marketplace. Giants in the political field. They are rising from this house. Giants in the academia. They are rising, they are rising, they are rising. Giants in the marketplace. We are the army, there's an army rising up. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. 
We break loose our finances. We break loose. We break loose. We break loose. We break loose. I see the chains falling. I see, I see the chains falling. Chains are falling off your hands. I see. Receive an anointing for empowerment for wealth. Empowerment for wealth. Empowerment for wealth. Empowerment for wealth. We break from poverty. We break from struggle. Oh yes, there is power to break every chain. In the name of Jesus. Sharabaka tori bazanda. Ropo zekataraba zekiteri bazanda. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Giants are rising. Giants are rising. Some of us may not look like giants. But the anointing of God is pushing us to start operating with the grace of giants. David was not like one but the moment he brought down Goliath women sang a song and said we have seen a man who can slay giants they said our king has only slain a thousand but there is a young man here who is reigning thousands his name is David by the look of things he does not look like one but there is something inside of him there is something inside of him his mindset is greater than the size of the body his mindset is greater I may look small by size but my mind is great my mind is great I have the mind of Christ in me and in him I can do all things I know him that I believe Christ Christ the hope of glory Woo, thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah we worship you precious redeemer this morning of time we are so honored and we are so grateful that you gave us a blessed morning to break mental strongholds to break loose and to break free from things beliefs force faulty beliefs that has held us captive for years thank you for giving us a blessed morning 
that you may take captive evil thoughts, negative thoughts that have haunted us, guilt that has haunted us for years, voices that keep pulling us down. Thank you for giving us a bright morning that you may pull down every stronghold, that you may refute every argument, that you may say rest every reasoning, and that you may receive the mind of Christ. We command every thought subject and obedient to Christ in the name of Jesus. Father, we are grateful. Father, we worship and honor your holy name. Receive all the praises for this day. Receive all the praises for your doings. And this we pray in Jesus' name. And the church shouted. And the church shouted. I see in the church shouted. To shout to King of Kings, shout like somebody whose mental stronghold has broken. Shout and give him a celebration. Come on, shout like somebody that is shut free. You can give him a dance. Celebrate Jesus for setting you free. I am free. When you see me dance. I dance like a winner. When you see me celebrate, I celebrate like a winner. I am no longer a captive of the thought of evil. I am free. Let me dance in the Holy Ghost. Woo! Hallelujah. Dina, let's go. When I dance like a winner, man. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner, man. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. What should we just come? Like when you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. Are there winners? I dance like a winner man. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. Yeah, I dance like a winner man. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Those dancers. Who I'm seeing and I'm hearing are not winners. Those kind of dance are only for people. Those kind of voices and dance that I'm seeing here are only for losers. We want to give Jehovah a dance of winners. Amen? Amen. A dance of winners. Let's go. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. Come on, dance, come on. I dance like a winner man. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner man. When you see me dance, I dance like a
shout, I shout like a winner man. Are fallen, the Lord has set us free, and this is the lowest we'll ever be in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the risk of any offering you ever give in any place in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Whatever you have come with, with today in the house of God, let it be the risk you'll ever give in the house of the Lord, amen. May God take you to another level, amen. amen. As we package the offering, I want to remind us that our giving. Our living depends on our giving. Our living depends on our giving. Tell your neighbor, your living depends on your giving. Amen. The way you shall live the rest of your life, it depends on how you give to your God, how you give to the needy, how you give to the needs of the society. That is what determines how you live. Amen. That's why givers, they never lack. Because your giving determines your living. So give as one who understands the power that is in giving. Amen. There is power. We are saying there is power in the name of Jesus and there is power also in giving. Let me give you uh, three ways that men rise. Men rise, number one, by revelation. Say revelation. revelation. Men rise, number one, by revelation. revelation. You rise to your next level by the revelation that you get. The amount of knowledge that you receive. The amount of understanding that you receive. And here we talk about the revelation of the word of God. Because what makes us wise, it is this word. Amen. So men rise by number one, liberation. Number two, men rises through honor. Men rises through honor. The second way that you can rise and rise is it's not work hard. It's not work smart. It's through honor. So here we have an opportunity to honor God with our giving. We have an opportunity to honor them that God has honored. Men that have risen in life are men who have known the secret of honor. 
Number three, man rises by sacrifice. Man rises by sacrifice. Amen. The sacrifice you are willing to pay. Those who rise in the academic field, they rise by sacrifice of sleep. Hawalali wa kiandika. Hawalali wa kisoma. They sacrifice. And that's why we call them doctors. We call them professors. We honor them. Man rises by sacrifice. When you see churches doing well, those churches are rising because there are men and women in those churches who have decided to sacrifice their food, sacrifice their resources, sacrifice their time, sacrifice everything to get God. Amen? So men rises by revelation. They rise by honor. They rise by sacrifice. And we also have an opportunity to sacrifice our gifts today. Sacrifice part of what God has given you. If you want to rise, rise by sacrificing. Don't just be an ordinary giver. Ati mtu ambaye hutoa tu sadaka za kawaida. Kata kuwa mtu wa sadaka za kawaida. Aminia mungu mtu ambaye utatoa sacrifice. Not just offering. There is a difference between offering and sacrifice. An offering is just anything. In fact, it's called love offering. Unatoa kwa upendo. Lakini sacrifice, it is pain. Sacrifice is a pain offering. Something that you give painfully. Something that you give and you are left with nothing. You remain waiting on God. I remember one time we attended a conference in Nyeri and the Spirit of God prompted us to give everything. We went to our account, we emptied everything that was in our account and we put it on the offering basket. And I told my wife, we are going back to Nairobi. God knows how we shall live. And we came back to Nairobi. And we have lived. Aren't we alive today? We didn't die because we sacrificed what we had. As a matter of fact, that provoked other things. Other greater doors opened up for us. Are you ready to give to the Lord? Let's rise on our feet. We pray for our gifts and then we bring them to the Lord. Raise it up with honor because that's a gift you're giving to God and you have come. And you know it's a gift that you're giving to God. Just raise it up with honor before the King of Kings. Father, we are so glad that you have blessed us today. And we have come to your house with a heart of thanksgiving, with a heart of gratitude. And we have come with money. We have come with resources. We have come with tokens and gifts. Just to acknowledge your love and just to acknowledge that we know that indeed you own everything. Today we are releasing our tithes. We are releasing our offerings. We are releasing our gifts to the projects. We are releasing money to support this work as we know that, Lord, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so, Lord, we give with joy. And this we pray in Jesus' name. If you have come with your tithe, you can allow me to receive it first. I can